Pierre Steele is a recognized expert on topics like motivation and procrastination, and in his book, The Procrastination Equation, he gives an equation you can use to analyze exactly why you procrastinate. He says that procrastination is a fight between the prefrontal cortex and our limbic system. Considering immediate pleasures like food activates the limbic system, while thinking about future benefits activates the prefrontal cortex. Now back in the day, when our primary job was to hunt, you always had to act according to immediate pleasures and threats. And for that reason you could rely on impulses from the limbic system, while today your success in life is highly influenced by your ability to delay gratification, and for that reason you have to rely more on your prefrontal cortex for impulse control. But unfortunately, we have only partially evolved to the rising demands of self-control through the development and use of the prefrontal cortex. Interestingly, the development of our brains from our time inside the womb through childhood and adolescence roughly correspond to the evolutionary development of the brain. In both cases, the prefrontal cortex is one of the last regions to fully develop. And even in its most developed form, we are still wired to procrastinate. But what can we do about it? Well, that's where the procrastination equation comes into place. It says that motivation is equal to expectancy times value divided by impulsiveness times delay. So this is just a mathematical way of saying that to increase your motivation and thereby decrease your procrastination, you have to increase expectancy and value while decreasing impulsiveness and delay. Expectancy is a number that represents your confidence in your ability to reach your goal. The problem is that if you have low expectancy and are afraid of failing, you will not even try and thereby create a self-fulfilling prophecy. To fix this, Per Steel has two recommendations. 1. Success spirals. Set achievable goals and then your results will create motivation for more effort which will create new results, and so on. 2. Vicarious victory. If you read autobiographies or connect with successful people in other ways, you will see what's possible through them and thereby raise your expectancy. But be careful about having too big expectations. As the graph shows, you need just enough optimism to believe the task is possible, but from there on being more optimistic it just make you believe you have to work less and thereby decrease your motivation. Value is a number that represents how valuable you perceive the goal to be. If you want to increase value, then Per Steel has four recommendations. 1. You should create approach goals instead of avoid goals. So you should be saying, I want to be healthy instead of, I don't want to be unhealthy. 2. Self-praise and give yourself rewards. We begin mixing up our goals with the rewards. An example of this is that we associate working with making money and are thereby motivated to work. 3. Find work that is intrinsically valuable. This one really explains itself. 4. Remember the bigger picture of what you're doing and why it's important. It's the difference between a bricklayer who sees himself building a wall and a bricklayer who sees himself building a cathedral. Impulsiveness is a number that represents our sensitivity to delay. The more impulsive we are, the less likely we are to delay gratification, and this will of course be worse the longer the delay is. To fix this, Per Steel has five recommendations. 1. Remove all temptations. Hide the TV remote, close all social media apps, and throw out the junk food. 2. Be healthy. If you get good sleep, food, and exercise, you will have more willpower to override your impulses and pursue your goals instead. 3. Punish yourself if you don't do what you should do. 4. 
see temptations abstractly. If you want to avoid cookies, you can just think of them as round objects. 5. In your mind, you can pair the image of the desired distraction with something undesirable. 6. Get habits into your daily life, because habits are something you just do no matter what, and the fewer moments of choice, the less you will procrastinate. And if you want to see a video on how to develop good habits, you can see it right here. And finally, delay is a number that represents how far away the reward is. If someone else has decided the date of the final deadline, then the only thing you can do is to create deadlines up to the final deadline. But with all this said, it's still important to strike a balance between procrastinating and being too disciplined. Many workaholics regret not having more moments of goofing off, and many industrious students regret studying through the spring break. But if you are watching this video, then most likely you are procrastinating too much, and you have to do something about it. Thank you for watching. I've included a link in the description where you can buy the book, and if you want to have more quick insights on how to live a good life, then remember to subscribe.